Hello, I'm Freddie Barsmith, a PhD student at the University of Oxford. I'm here to present the paper titled Survivalism, Systematic Analysis of Windows Malware Living Off the Land. This research was a collaboration with researchers from Cisco Talus. What is a living off the land binary? There have been various definitions of living off the land in the literature. In this paper, we define a living off the land binary as any binary with a recognised legitimate use that is leveraged during an attack to directly perform malicious action or to assist indirectly in a sequence of actions that have a final malicious outcome. These are binaries that are typically considered benign, being repurposed for malicious activity. For example, common Windows utilities, such as NET or RegEdit, typically used to administer hosts, can instead be used to modify firewalls or internal configurations to further an attack. Scripting utilities, such as the MSHTA program, can even be used to execute attacker-controlled scripts within an apparently benign context. The malicious use of these binaries has been reported anecdotally and appears to be growing. As such, we sought to conduct a thorough study of this phenomenon. There is no systematic study in the academic literature of this phenomenon yet. One of the most skilled APT groups, Turla, is shown here. We found that by analysing the samples of one of the earlier malware campaigns, that there was only one living off the land technique used in the kill chain, that being Brundl32. For the latter campaign, the 2018 Mosquito campaign, we found a high number of different living off the land techniques being used by the same group. This shows the adoption of living off the land techniques, principally because of their evasive capabilities to different APT malware campaigns. We deployed payloads using this malware against 10 different antiviruses, taken from a list of the most popular antivirus software. Our first experiment here highlights why malware authors use these techniques. They are capable of evading all of the top antivirus software. These tests showed that low bin usage indeed has an impact on the AV industry, and this problem shouldn't be overlooked. We repeated our tests on Windows 10 machines, nine months after our initial evasion testing. This allowed us to see whether antivirus firms had managed to patch their heuristic detection algorithms. It's worth noting that while several antivirus products appear to have patched their algorithms, if we kept the same parameters but switched the payloads, in all but seven cases, we were still able to evade the antivirus detection algorithms. This highlights the seriousness of the problem. The living off the land techniques can appear so close to legitimate behaviour that they are hard to detect even when known about. In performing this research, we tried to answer five distinct research questions. We first sought to understand what benefit the use of living off the land binaries would provide to prompt their increased use. Our first research question was, can living off the land techniques be used to evade commercial antivirus? This would subsequently motivate our later work. There are plenty of blog posts where malware researchers report families using living off the land techniques in different ways. For this reason, our second question sought to understand how prevalent these techniques are in malware datasets. Our second research question. But not only this, Living off the land techniques can be used to carry out a myriad of different malicious actions. What purposes do malware binaries use living off the land binaries for? Our third research question. And how does this usage vary across malware families? Our fourth research question. Finally, as binaries are dual use, our final research question asked what the overlap was between legitimate and malicious usage of them, and whether there were notable differences that might be a useful basic for for heuristic detection. In performing our analysis, there were a number of different commodity malware campaigns that make use of living off the land techniques. We used a large number of datasets in order to increase the reliability of our results and ensure that they were also varied. We also take special steps in order to make sure our datasets are reliable by removing erroneous data. We made use of various well-known commodity malware datasets such as Ember, Ember Benign, VirusShare, VX Underground, Georgia Tech and Malshare. We also had some private datasets that we used and created ourselves. One was the APT dataset, wherein we collected 16,000 APT samples from automated processing of threat intelligence reports. This allowed us to zero in on APT campaigns which were of special interest. 
Another was a data set where we have written Yara rules and used Live Hunt to get a list of samples that we discovered to be using living off the land techniques as they were uploaded to the platform. These rules assist with detection. VT Balanced is a data set that we collected of various malware samples that is representative of various malware families. There are a number of different characteristics that we use to augment the data contained by these malware hashes. This data is added for the purpose of making analysis more effective. First seen is used for determining the first time of a virus sample being seen. AV class family is the family to which a malware sample belongs. This is the state of the art in malware research from a paper in 2017. Behavioural reports list processes and shell commands executed by a given malware sample. There are a few different execution purposes that can be identified from our data and the behavioural reports for each sample. We used iterative classification in order to do this. Some examples here show our technique identification method. We can identify execution by several means. We identify proxied execution as an execution purpose through examples such as nshda.exe with hta as a parameter or run DLL32 with a DLL parameter. We can identify persistence, wherein malware tries to surreptitiously remain on a system, such as that conducted by sc.exe, bitsadmin.exe, skitas.exe, or at.exe. Delayed execution is another use case, such as that used by Gray Energy through ping.exe. There is firewall modification, such as that used by netsh.exe, with the firewall parameter. There's registry modification, wherein the add and delete parameters are used with reg.exe. Further example is permissions modification, wherein calcs.exe is used with an absolute file parameter. File opening is another execution purpose that is identified. There is reconnaissance, wherein a malware sample is trying to reconnoiter the local environment using commands such as net.exe and ipconfig.exe. Finally, tasks can be stopped using commands such as taskkill.exe with the parameter of a program. Here we show the average prevalence across datasets for living off the land techniques. We initially found that a benign dataset contained a far lower percentage of samples using living off the land techniques at 2.5%. This gives scope for heuristic detection. The APT dataset contains just over 25% of samples using living off the land techniques meaning that these are advanced techniques used most of all by skilled threat actors. There are differences in execution purposes shown between different datasets here. The most common eventual purpose of execution being reconnaissance, task stopping or proxied execution. We can see that the distribution of execution per is different across datasets. Particularly interesting is the APT malware dataset, wherein the main two use cases are proxied execution and delayed execution, such as that conducted via ping.exe. The figure in the centre shows that there is differing prevalence of binaries within different datasets. This is to say that the distribution of the most common living off the land binaries differs between datasets. The shaded boxes are the most common binaries used in each dataset, which we can see varies. Our fourth re research question is which malware families and types use living off the land binaries most prolifically and how does their usage differ? So this data on families, which we got using the state of the art tool AV class, classified samples into families. We can see that only a small number of families have a high percentage of their samples using these techniques. Conversely, a large number of families that have a small percentage of their samples using these techniques. One thing we also encountered was the use of living off the land techniques by APT malware, as we saw a few slides ago. Living off the land usage was over twice as common in APT datasets as it was in commodity malware. As we can see here, some notable APT malware campaigns use living off the land techniques in a very large percentage of their samples. There are also a lot of combinations of different binaries within the dataset. And those APT groups that use living off the land binaries use them across multiple campaigns. 
for the Ember and Ember benign datasets we compared, we found that there were interesting results. Across these execution purpose categories, there are some noticeable differences between samples. For instance, proxied execution was far more common in the benign dataset than it was in the malicious one, similarly with task stopping and file opening. This can have implications for detection, as certain acts such as registry modification shown to be more common in malicious datasets than they are in benign ones. The takeaways of our research is that we discovered there was an overall prevalence of 9.6% living off the land techniques averaged across all commodity malware datasets compared to the far higher prevalence in APT malware datasets, 26.26%. We also discovered that there's a large variability across different families of malware. There's also a high false positive risk when detecting use of these binaries, as we show by comparison of malicious and benign binaries in Ember, an Ember benign dataset and our evasion experiments. The differences give the capability to develop detection algorithms, such as some of those we assisted with by our responsible disclosure to antivirus firms, especially Kaspersky and Sophos. There are also mitigations such as the removal of malware that used anti-VM techniques from our datasets by identifying crashed and blank reports, which are sandbox states that would give erroneous results. We adhered to the three critical assessment criteria in Brosseau's 2012 paper, Prudent Practices for Malware Experiments, that is, correctness, transparency and realism, as far as was possible in our paper. Of course, as this is the first work in this domain, there is a lot of future work still to do. One area is the deployment of these techniques by human operators. Human operators are very common in ransomware and other malware groups and often use living off the land techniques in their post-exploitation activity. In many cases, these are open source or off the shelf hacking tools. Another is the use of Linux living off the land techniques. Linux living off the land techniques are known as GTFO bins to match the colloquial name of LOL bins for Windows systems. There is also the development of detection algorithms as another avenue of research, particularly for EDR systems. And in developing these detection algorithms, the false positive rates and patterns we discovered can potentially be useful there. So in conclusion, this is the first paper looking at this new trend of living off the land techniques. We tested the vulnerability of antivirus to evasion by these techniques. No AV copes well with these. We also performed a large scale assessment of the prevalence of these techniques in commodity and APT malware datasets. Thank you for listening to our presentation. Please let me know if you do have any questions in the preceding Q&A. Many thanks.